40. All right. The opening night, Frank Sinatra was an opener on the bill. And he Not even the Larry's fail is about to happen in C3. All right. Well, so, welcome uh, to this year's E3. Here, we're going to be reacting to every... We're going to be reacting to John, EA's lately, conference Davies, today. Related, As you can see up above... I wonder if we're are we synced up? <laughs> I think we're synced up. I didn't actually test it. Transformed the parking lot, the venue, blew it up even more. Twenty nineteen. All right, now let me let me test this. Music, it's great time. And so, what is it about EA Play? Yep, we're synced up. Is it? I wonder if it's loud enough. I can, I couldn't hear it on the stream. Close down streets. There's thousands of people that come through. All I know is that we get to play some bingo. It's a really good time. Did I miss it? All right. Well, here's bingo. As you can see, way up there is a bingo board. Let me bring that up a little bit bigger. So this is the bingo board. It's very basic because I've made it myself. <laughs> so as you can see, there's a bunch of different things that could possibly happen. The middle is obviously a free zone. Sure, for the time being. Yeah, 30 seconds before it starts. So, last year, I don't recall if we ever got a bingo. But if we get a bingo this year, yay! Also, I'm in my, I'm in, I'm back in my office. Uh, it took me all day so far to get, uh, no loot boxes? I thought I had, oh, the free, the free-to-play thing is the loot box one. So, if, if, uh, yeah, if free-to-play, here, let me fix that very quickly. Oh, it's about to start. I can't type. So there's a mention of loot boxes. We'll, we'll just add it to that. <laughs> Let's get it back over here. Turn the volume up a little bit. Let me know if I need to turn the volume up a little bit more. I think we're starting with Anthem. Okay. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the show. Oh. But welcome, everybody, to EA Play. I'm Andrew Renee. And while you might recognize me from the gaming community, I'm kind of a new face around here. So this year, EA wanted to change things up because they know that I'm both a gamer and a You can fan. barely hear it. All right, turn it up. Me to come and host the show. And I think this year is going to be a lot of fun, you guys. I hope you're ready because we're about to kick the press conference off. It's going to be a little but careful that I don't turn do up that, too much. EA Play is more than just the show you're about to watch. Right behind these doors, there is a fan fest outside, and it is huge this year. It's a full three-day gaming festival where thousands of gamers can come and play games for free. Now, inside the theater here, there are hundreds of community members from all over the world who are going to be capturing, streaming, and getting their first impressions of the games that we're going to be showing off here today. I'm streaming. Hi. But before <laughs> we can get to that, we've got some reveals, of course. We're going to kick things off with a look at Battlefield 5 multiplayer. Now, I know Trevor Noah gave you the first look. Yeah, we can clap it up. Last month, but we've got some new stuff to show you today. Then we're going to move on to FIFA 19. And boy, do they have some big news, you guys. Sports games. Any World Cup fans? Yeah. You guys excited? Yeah. Not my cup of tea, but I know people are. People like then them. Then we've got two new indie games to share. And then I'm going to come back towards the end of the show with some of my favorite developers to give you guys a nice, meaty look at Anthem. And of course, yeah, we got the woos for Anthem. I'm into it. I wonder if Anthem is just going to be their main this focus this year. <laughs> 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 well, wouldn't it be fun, you guys, if I killed you all the secrets at once, right? Well, give, give him a break. He needs to just enjoy the show. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get things started. I think we're starting with Battlefield 5. I'm going to turn up the volume just a little bit more. <laughs> 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 
they they yet to show anything real so far. Huh? Right, it's time to kick this thing off. It's been two weeks since the reveal of Battlefield 5. And you know what? It's been exciting, it's been a lot of speculation, and so many brilliant remixes of a reveal trailer. But there's also been lots and lots of questions from the community. And we've heard you, you want to see more gameplay innovations. You want to know how customization actually works, and you want to know more about our take on the Second World War. So today, we'll show you more gameplay and why this is the deepest and most immersive battlefield yet. It certainly is. You will be able to dive and smash through windows to surprise your enemies. Where previously defenses were stationary, you will now be able to move these weapons around on the battlefield and gain advantages. And our right. renowned destruction system is back and more impactful than ever. So, well, you can't really hide from those pesky tanks anymore as they come chasing you for you, as they <laughs> rip through those buildings. And you will now be able to customize your soldiers, your vehicles, and your weapons, not only for the gameplay, but for the looks, as part of our portrayal of the Second World War. And um, that's just the tip of the iceberg in Battlefield 5. We're going to see a lot more of our new gameplay systems here at EA Play from our community. Are they going to so, play it? Let's talk about our single player in War Stories. Yes, let's do that. So we want to tell you about those untold stories that got us excited to start with on this game. It's about what you will see is really those moments of human heroism. It is about witnessing the war through the eyes of the men and the women who shaped the world forever. Real and, <coughs> real and relatable people facing the brutality of war. We start this off by an exclusive look at uh, the Nordlys war story over at the Xbox briefing tomorrow. Aww. Thanks, that's that's something <laughs> not to miss tomorrow. So they're not showing, they're not so showing single player stuff until October Xbox. It's just the beginning. You will all go on an expanding Cut. journey through the Second World War. <laughs> no loot boxes, no premium packs. <laughs> okay, well. They I, heard, I think they mentioned it before. We'll bring something new. And as part of that journey, after launch, you'll get something I know a lot of you have been asking for. Mm -hmm. It's Royale. Of course. <laughs> well, Battle Royale. It's, it's Royale reimagined for Battlefield. <laughs> yeah, so the crowd was so muted. It was like so divisive. Team play vehicles into this new experience. So we will bring you experience that you haven't played before in Battlefield or anywhere else. Where is mobile gaming on their place? More about that later this year. So with that, it's time to show you what makes Battlefield so special. It's the unmatched intensity of our multiplayer sandbox, and this time it's even more epic, fighting across multiple maps and modes. Welcome to your next Battlefield experience, and this is your first look at Ground Operations. And this time, even featuring music. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So is this actual gameplay? Because this is in-game footage. I don't, I don't, it, I think it'll depend on who screws it up first, big, the big, the, the biggest. I mean, like how Minecraft introduced like crafting survival uh, and building open world oh god <laughs> as soon as i say crafting and building that a hammer pops up on screen i mean because that's still kind of popular right now and minecraft's almost 10 years old <laughs> minecraft's almost 10 years old that's creepy to think about To be honest, I I never played one Battlefield One. In fact, I don't recall ever playing the multiplayer of three either. It looks fun though. 
three and three and one dead. Zeus! Nordly's war story. Do they have a release date? I assume later this year. Oh, we're switching right up to. Right up to football, huh? <laughs> I can see right here I have football soccer because I'm, I'm, I'm a cruel person. <laughs> I think we wanted to see like a match of Battlefield 5 would have been great. Maybe even see a little bit of their Battle Royale would have been probably good than just saying that they have Battle Royale. I mean, Black Ops 4 said they had Battle Royale, but they gave, like, information about how it would work. How it would separate it from the, from the rest. But Battlefield didn't. So I'm curious. I'm so thirsty. I haven't eaten anything today. Even 19. I'm afraid to start playing sports games because I know that it's just it just the next year I have to buy it again. I got burned on pro golf. I still have that game though. <laughs> Seeing as how they're making that so much bigger than it is might it might actually be the real trophy that's the uefa champions league the pinnacle of club football where the world's best clubs compete and icons of the game like gerard and Cruyff cemented their legacies the world's biggest well, i don't have i don't have trophy on the bingo board <laughs> and a special thanks to the legendary hans zimmer and la's own vince staples for collaborating with us on the trailer and I really love the trailer because it captures our epic vision for how the Champions League comes to life in FIFA 19. I screwed up, the, I, I screwed up more things on this bingo board. As Aaron said, the UEFA Champions League is an amazing addition for the game. It's where football's biggest heroes like Ronaldo and Neymar clash every year. And it's the place where champions rise. And you've been asking for this for a long time, and we are thrilled that it's here. Free? And that's why we're bringing the Champions <laughs> League across the game. There'll be an authentic Champions League tournament mode. Your club will chase this trophy in career mode. Alex Hunter will pursue Champions League glory in your story mode, the journey. And in FIFA Ultimate Team, there'll be live and authentic Champions League content. And we'll share more details on that along with all our other Ultimate Team features later this summer. And all that's just the beginning. As you know, the heart and soul of FIFA is gameplay. And this year, we're giving you the tools to control the pitch in every moment. From your tactical I don't know, approach I, you to You know, I've never actually played a FIFA game, so I don't know how, they, how football works. And we know how, 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 how the gameplay works. you are about gameplay, so we've worked hard to shape <laughs> so the kind of lost on me for FIFA 19 with input from our community from hands-on tests with beginners to detailed feedback sessions with FIFA pros. And we're gonna be sharing a lot more about gameplay throughout the summer, but what I can tell you right now is that the quality bar in gameplay was raised yet again this year. So we look forward to everybody experiencing the game on the hands-on sessions this week. And also, of course, we're extremely excited for everybody to play it when we launch on September 28th. Release really date. And that's our FIFA 19 news headlined by the UEFA Champions League. But I just wanted to take a minute to pause and reflect. <laughs> Standing next to this trophy is a little bit surreal. You know, growing up, there's two iconic trophies that every young player dreams of winning. And for your club, it's this one, the pursuit of Champions League glory. But for your country, it's this trophy. <laughs> The World Cup. And with the tournament starting in just five days, we're excited for the world to compete for it in FIFA 18. Ooh. As you can of, imagine, all nice of us timed. on the FIFA team can't wait for the start of the World Cup. And we want to celebrate with FIFA 18 players, which is why 
We just updated the game with a free World Cup experience on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PS, PC, and Nintendo Switch. <laughs> but you can take Ronaldo and Portugal to their first World Cup victory. Or you can write your own story with some great nations who didn't qualify this year. Or you can make a crazy dream a reality for your home country like mine, Iceland. Who would have thought that a nation of only 350,000 people would ever qualify? And you can feel their excitement. It's the Skull Chat chant. Skull! <laughs> Apologies to any England fans in the room, that might still sting. <laughs> and Lena isn't the only one who's excited. FIFA 18 players are loving the World Cup experience so far. But we don't want to stop there, we want to invite everyone to come and join the celebration. So I'm pleased to announce that for a limited time, FIFA 18 complete with the entire World Cup experience is available for a free trial Ooh. on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and on PC through Origin Access. Yeah, you can download and play the entire game right now for free. Temporarily. Yeah. Until, until, the, until the World Cup's over, probably. So to kick off the trial, we've got some of the world's biggest creators who are going to be playing live at the end of the show, representing their nations in a little mini World Cup tournament. And this summer will bring so much more for FIFA fans. Kind of a nice, good, Let nice deal. FIFA 18 content centered around the World Cup and we'll bring you all the details on FIFA 19. But in the meantime, let's all enjoy the World Cup. Thank you, and Auf Ravistan! Yeah, because all, all I really know about FIFA, FIFA games are like the weird glitches that happen. <laughs> What I get for living in America. <laughs> Good morning. EA oh, he's not wearing a suit. FIFA 19. You know, the FIFA he's going, he's going casual. This is casual for the Saturday. Playing in competitive leagues this year. Well, the FIFA team never rests either, bringing the Champions League and the World Cup and so much other greatness to FIFA this year. We can't wait for you to experience it all. Um, we've got so much to do here today, but I want to welcome you to EA Play. It's our third EA Play. And Some people like it. Some people Hollywood, like sports games. And we couldn't be more excited to have you with us. I mean, they sell a lot. So. all the games that we have to show you. But yeah, they we probably just... To do, they probably before we get, don't watch before it for we the move sports. On, I'd like to share just a couple of things. The greatest disruption to the consumption of entertainment media in the last five years is the combination of streaming plus subscription. As consumers, watching movies, watching TV, listening to music, reading books really has never been this. easier. And we believe that disruption is going to be a pro have a profound impact on our industry in the next few years. And so over the last couple of weeks, you will have seen that we announced a new team from Israel has joined Electronic Arts to help our investment to extend our thinking and extend our pioneering into this cloud gaming world. For many people, that's going to that mean mobile? extending the experiences they already play on our partner platforms. For others, it's going to mean new games and new modalities of play across a whole variety of platforms. But for everyone, it's going to mean playing games anywhere, anytime. So this week, we've got a tech demo running. Um, all of our games streaming in HD from the cloud to multiple devices that you'll be able to try out for yourselves. Now, it's not quite ready for full market prime time yet, but it is a promise of what we hope to bring you in the future. The second part of that, of course, is subscription. And we started subscription a number of years ago, and many millions of you have signed up and experienced the joy of being able to have full access to a great catalog yeah, of access. games. Today, we're announcing Origin Access Premiere. So three things you need to know about it. It's more expensive. Origin Access Premier will bring you all of our new PC games, starting with Madden NFL, back on the PC for the first time in over a decade. Ooh, that's a nice announcement. <laughs> then FIFA 19, Battlefield 5, and of course Anthem. And there'll be many more titles in the years to come. Ooh. 
Second, you get nice access to the vault, our library of over 100 games from EA and other publishers. And third, it will launch later this summer. So that's a little later in the year, but if you want to get started right now and experience the benefits and joys of subscription, come in and play a free trial of Origin Access, our base subscription, this weekend. Thank you and have a great show. Do they have... I'm thinking of something completely different, aren't I? <laughs> no, they have EA Access. For like, X, for like Xbox and PlayStation. Maybe not for PC. Now they do. Wow. Plants vs. Zombies, Guard Warfare, that's been so long. What? Batman? Hey, game montage. <laughs> Sims? That doesn't count for The Sims. <laughs> hey, everybody. What's up? So I'm here sitting inside the crowd at EA Play, and I just happened to find Mr. Vince Ampella here in the audience from Respawn. Ooh. What's Ooh. going on, Vince? How you feeling today? I'm feeling great. Titanfall? I love this stuff. I love seeing new games. Or you something new from Respawn. I'm excited about that man on PC, right? Yeah. Ooh. So, um, you guys may have seen that uh, Vince was tweeting yesterday, and there has been a bunch of speculation. No, I'm kind of curious. So, uh, you want to just get right to it? Sure. I mean, we're not ready to show all of our stuff yet. We're working on a bunch of stuff. It's amazing. The teams are kicking ass. Oh, I don't have anything for Star we Wars on this to thing. We bring a little tidbit. So we've been working with Lucas on getting the name and kind of the setting for what our Star Wars game is going to be, and we're going to talk about it right <laughs> now. I was just about to switch. Oh, you guys got any guesses? I bet you the, the internet is going wild right now. I hope so. <laughs> so the Star Wars name is Jedi Fallen Order. Woo! So Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, so it kind of gives you some idea that you'll be playing a Jedi. So yeah, does Jedi. that mean I get to like hold a lightsaber? Yes. So does that mean this is like a? So Vince, you got a, you got anything? Jedi else? Outcast. Well, it takes place sequels? during the dark times. Trying to be a little vague here, but when the Jedi's are being hunted, so it's going to be a spectacular. So for all the like the hardcore nerds I, out there who want to know like this. where in the timeline, like what between which episodes is it? Between three and four. Three and four. Okay. All oh, right. Between three and four. That sounds like a nice how do you time. Know, how do you not know what this is for? Any other tidbits? No? It's not a nice. It's a dark time. It's a dark time. <laughs> Bad time. Does that mean it's gonna just be all dark and serious? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think people are now anxiously want to know, like, what, when can we play the game? Uh, it will be holiday of next year, 2019, wow. not this Don't year. Don't announce things that so, far ahead. Sorry to dash any hope. No. <laughs> but now that we know, we can set expectations. We're all going to be amped up. And uh, hopefully we'll hear from more from no, you. No, you're going to kill the hype. Next year. Oh, yeah. You got 19 well, months now. <laughs> It was great to see you. Thanks for stopping by the show today. Uh, we do have a little bit more news on Star Wars, so I'm going to toss it over to Dennis. Hey, Battlefront 2, I have that information on here. Hello there. My name is Dennis. I work at DICE in Stockholm on Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm really happy and excited to be here today, so thank Didn't you they just announce, so much like, solo for DLC? hanging out with me for a little bit. So we launched our game in November of last year, and clearly we didn't get it quite right. <laughs> so instead of coming out of the gate sprinting like we really wanted to, we had to take a step back and Don't. make sure that we were delivering the game that our players really wanted. So we decided to completely overhaul our progression system and add a bunch of new character cosmetics for players to collect instead. So from there, we added a new hunt mode, inspired by the original Battlefront games that I loved personally, starting with the Ewoks on Endor. And <laughs> thank you. Uh, 
we, um, it turned out to be by far the most popular update of the game, and the team loved building Ewok Hunt. I'm just playing the same footage. So, over as you might know, we're currently in our Han Solo season with content from the movie coming next week. It's headlined by the new planet Kessel, a really dangerous place, and it features the return of one of our favorite modes, Extraction. So looking forward a little bit, this summer we will be introducing a new squad system to the game, which will allow you to team up much easier and play with your friends. I haven't actually seen the We're movie. We're also adding a new Starfighter mode focused around dogfighting with your hero ships. And so I guess I'm kind of a spoiling little myself more, a little bit. <laughs> we will also be delivering a new large-scale multiplayer sandbox experience focused around capturing command posts and attacking and taking out capital ships. But that's not all. We know that you have been asking for new heroes, villains, and planets from a certain era that features a very iconic Star Wars conflict, so I'm excited to confirm that Battlefront 2 this year will be going deep into the Clone Wars. What battle are we talking about specifically? It's only fitting that we begin on the planet Geonosis, featuring multiple levels, including the largest level we have ever built for Battlefront. So let's talk about the heroes and villains. First, let me introduce... Grievous! The, oh. most powerful droid, <laughs> the leader of the most powerful droid army in the galaxy, General Grievous. I'll mark that down for Battlefront 2 yes, DLC. He will be going up against my own personal favorite, Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. How's he look? Finally making his debut in Battlefront after all these years. So, but we're, we're not done. That's not it. They will not come alone. Joining them is the Dark Lord, I'm on, I'm on the solo as the theme of the song Separatist for the DLC. Alliance, Count Dooku, as well as someone to bring balance to the Force, Obi-Wan's unruly Padawan, Anakin Skywalker. Why are they announcing them there? The team at home is extremely excited to be building all of these cool things. EA and DICE are committed to Battlefront. I was, ex I was totally expecting one of them to walk on start, stage. But I really think that this game has a bright future. Thank you very much for playing the game, providing us with your feedback, talking to us. Together, we will make this a, the greatest game that we can possibly build. There would be no Battlefront without you. So thank you, may the force be with you, and enjoy the rest of E3. <laughs> they did, okay, so they didn't announce when the Clone Wars DLC is coming out. They just said it's coming out, and they have, they have Skywalker, they have Solo, they have Dooku, and they have Grievous as, as uh, heroes and villains. And Geonosis is a map. What is this? <gasps> Yarny! Is that a Yarny sequel? I, I, I actually have not played the first one. No, don't, don't, don't rip! I completely forgot what the first one was called. Since I just called it Yarny Sequel. <laughs> Indie Dev Team on stage. Hi. It's it's really good to see you. Uh, you think I had announced it all those years ago? Yarn to symbolize love and the bonds. Nice yellow people. fingernails. In our new game, we we tear that bond up right at the start. You lose everything, including your spark. But when things are at their darkest, you Yarny find friends. Hope and you form a new bond, and your spark is rekindled, and it leads you off on an adventure. Ooh, a co-op co so game. So welcome to Unravel 2. Unravel, okay, that's what it was. I was like, it's something, I, 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 I thought it was Unravel, but I didn't want to say it out loud because I didn't want to be wrong. <laughs> it's a game about fresh starts and second chances. These two little souls who refuse to give up and who build something new and beautiful together. And the whole game is inspired by that spirit of optimism and togetherness. 
You see, it's all made to be played with two characters. You can play it He alone, has red fingernails and blue fingernails. What's the yellow fingernails for? But the there's spark? always two characters there sharing one yarn and working together to get through this adventure. This game, it's quite different from the first. It's, it's both friendlier and looks, more challenging. It's really, really floaty. But above all, it's a lot more playful. And, and we think it's a worthy successor. And I want to show it to you now. So I, I brought some help. Uh, so please m welcome Michael to the stage. So a producer at Coldwood. And we're going to try to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. about <laughs> is this the first actual the game. gameplay we've gotten so far in this, in this uh, E3? I mean, you know, actual in terms of not, not like they're actually playing it. Ooh, you can actually see the stuff up on top. There we are. <laughs> so when you're playing it by yourself, you can essentially pick up the other character and carry them along through the more fast-paced segments of the game. So just, just, and we actually just try to include oh God, a bird. bit more of those because we figured that since it's a co-op game, we wanted to have more like thrill and danger and kind of wild moments, uh, places that were like fun and exciting. And then when you get to the more puzzly areas like this, when you're problem solving, you can split apart into two and switch back and forth between the two characters because that's how we've essentially designed all the problems and puzzles of the game that you're always working together and helping each other out and utilizing this bond between you to overcome any obstacle that you come across. So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll jump in at this point. Yeah, so um, I'm going to be the re red one. OK. I'll be the blue one. I'll be blue. That seemed to be pretty instant. Celebratory flip there. See, the fact that they had like that little, like the little tech stuff at the beginning makes me think that this is actually really, like actually happening playing right now. Playing it safe like, it's not now. staged in some way. Oops. I'll swing. Like they're just, they're just playing part of a level. And they, they could uh, totally screw you. this up. <laughs> Whoa. Can I swing now? Okay, you go ahead. I like the swinging mechanic. Oh. Okay, this is the scary part. Let's see if we can... I kind of actually... I, I kind of don't want to see them Got fail, it. but if they fail, it'll make it more real. Oh, very nice. So I kind of want to see them fail. <laughs> oh. Go away, bird! Oh, faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. Sweet, well done. Just everywhere. Okay, I'll I'll go up and distract the grouse. You can. Oh, it's a grouse. <laughs> okay, your your turn. Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> keep, no, keep him over to the left. <laughs> now I'll go. All right. Now I'll, I'll pull him up. Ooh. There you go. I need to play the first one now. <laughs> I have to play the first one now. Now we can breathe again. Yeah, finally. <laughs> or can we? <laughs> this actually looks fun. No, not Yarny. So that's a that's a quick little look at um, Unravel Two. What, uh, what do you call the blue Yarny? The... Blarney? <laughs> yeah, I, I I really hope you like. It. I really hope they give him a nickname, and, and uh, I hope it's Blarney because it's funny. Before I go, I just want to send some some love to the team back home because. Working on this game has been an, a, a completely amazing team effort on so many levels, and everybody has oh, worked Oh, fun! So that was hard. an awesome so reveal! There, there's a bunch of us from Coldwood here, and, and thank you to those, and thank you to everybody back home, and thank you. Do they, have a, they don't think they showed a release date. I think the only one they've given out so far is for FIFA. I don't know they're going to make us all depressed with this opening until Blarney shows up.
point, I can just imagine what terrible foot. <laughs> how, how people are going to get screwed up in this game. Cannon? Oh, it's just like an ear shoot. Was that a red spark? The red spark that they run away from? So release date. Release date. Ah. Thank you, Martin, and the brilliant team at Coldwood. The great. The game is really strong. These guys have done an amazing job, and it's clear that they have a lot of passion. And I can't personally wait to play Unravel 2 with my kid. <laughs> but what's even more amazing is that we will make Unravel 2 available to everyone today. Yep, you heard that right. You'll be able to take these two Yarnies on their next big adventure starting today. The game is finished, it's out. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> That's pretty cool! So thank you, Martin, and thank you to the team at Coldwood. Back in 2015... Surprise drop! No, no release date, it's out now! To seek out the most creative, independent developers and bring them into our EA Originals program. It's been our way awesome. of helping these creators bring double -check the that. games to the world and to tell their stories. And last year, if you remember, Joseph Fares was up here on stage representing his team at Haze Light and the Oh, this out. thing was totally leaked! And I, I didn't even notice it! That. Um, and you might even remember him from the Game Awards as well. I think I did. Anyhow, I think I didn't March, that game caught fire. Ooh, it's, way out? It in, it's innovative, it's fun, and it's something fresh and new, and you all loved it. I haven't played we a way out. I've seen players in the first playthroughs of it. And a way out is such a huge success that Joseph and his team are expanding and moving into a new studio. So stories like this drive our industry, and it's why we will continue. Oh, they're not, to they're not, they're not some DLC, because I don't know how the DLC would work with that dreams. game. Which leads us to our next EA Originals title from a little game studio in Berlin called Joe My Games. When I met this team and I saw the game, I was instantly drawn to how personal this story was. It's one that tower carries a very powerful and important message, and it's unlike anything we have ever done. So please welcome Connie Gepper to the stage from Joe My Games to tell you more about Sea of Solitude. Sea of Solitude. <laughs> Oh, she is so nervous. Oh, thank you, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> just, just breathe, remember, just breathe. Um, during the pitch, how enthusiastic Patrick was, and that afterwards, like our whole team, including me, were super what excited. What a flooded city. It actually feels a little bit the same right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am pretty excited. Maybe a little too excited. <sighs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we are Yuma. Oh, I don't, I don't uh, see the Twitch chat, so I wonder what they're doing right from now. From Berlin, and we are developing Sea of Solitude, or SOS, as we call it. The whole journey from the very first concept to actually becoming a part of EA Originals is simply amazing. Let me tell you more about our game. When humans get too lonely, they turn into monsters. This is at the core of everything you will see, hear, and hopefully feel while playing. The red light on the boat is kind of creepy. What makes this underlying concept so important and so unique is that nearly every human being can at least somehow relate to or remember the feeling of being lonely. In my case, <laughs> I started writing the story when I felt the loneliest in my life. Mm. I think as an artist, you process your emotional world by letting it out uh, and putting it into your art. Um, I'm still amazed how like, the concept seems to just float out of me like uh, right into the hand and onto the paper. I think this is also why so many people can instantly connect with the game, because it's not a made-up story, even though that it takes place in a fantastic setting. In SOS, we try to show oh, SOS, how people it's a nice, nice abbreviation. kinds of loneliness, but also how outsiders, friends, 
and families see those who struggle. We achieve all this in playful ways so that players who want to simply enjoy a fantastic experience can do so. But player who wants to look a bit deeper can reveal a whole emotional world beneath it all. Sea of Solitude is about a young woman named Kay who is suffering from such strong loneliness that her inner feeling, the darkness, the anger, the hopelessness, worthlessness, turns to the outside and she becomes a monster. Mm. The game is about finding out why this happened to her, but also how to turn her back into a human. Ultimately, the goal is to bring all those emotions into balance. Some needs to become bigger, some would be better off a little smaller, but to embrace even your destructive part or your self-doubt in the same way you embrace your joy or your hope. This is what being human is all about. And that's what our game is all about. Thank you. When's it come out? Ooh. Ooh. This world that I live in is empty and cold. The loneliness cuts me and touches my soul. I'm no child of destiny. Ooh, that's creepy. And no fortune son. I've just chased you so long now. I'm too weak to run. A new day is here, but nothing is new. Alone in my room, I tremble for you. Early 2019. Any more things from this year, please? I mean, that looks cool. Yeah, I'm the one. Basketball time! But I'm not the only one. I think they announced. We wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, 2K is. 2, 2K, 2K19 is going to be LeBron. Who is the cover artist of NBA Live? We're balling. Be ready. Because we're coming at you with the spirit. ain't making NBA Live, right? Yeah. Say it how you want. Trust the process. It has to be something from Golden State. So like just one last night. Man. <laughs> as long as you hold your court. Or it could be Harden. Or it could they could both be LeBron. Just remember though, wherever you call home, street ball, NBA, oh boy, <laughs> sponsorships. This is my squad. Is it your life? Yeah, it is. September 7th. All right, let me get basketball off there now. That, is that going to be it for basketball? My name's Shay Kiblin, a.k.a. Young Kiv. Because we're Seattle, heading Washington. straight to Madden right now. Mine is really to win the Madden belt. Kiv's been going after that belt since 2016. At some point, he's going to need to get out of the quarterfinal and claim a major. It's a big night for young Kiv. He's been stuck at the quarterfinals. And here he is now in his first championship game, looking to accomplish a goal. Third and four, throws it low. T watch. That was a phenomenal read. And Trini's got the lead. 40. Yeah, I kinda, I'm kind of curious to see how. Uh... I hate losing way more than. Oh, yeah, there should, there should be a Monstars and a Toon Squad team. That would sell. So much, even if you just make a DLC, you can't I can't imagine how many people would buy that. I'm actually curious to see how esports is with with sports games, how they play it. Probably one thing to actually watch the sport. Probably another thing to actually watch someone play the sport in a video game. Hey look, athlete on stage! Okay, baby, how you doing? That was good football good. marked off there because I got to talk about Madden right now. Wow, already starting. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Juju Smith Schuster from the Pittsburgh Southerners. Um, would, would he be considered a. Uh, 
That's pretty fun. Celeb YouTuber I like that a lot. on stage. Um, as you guys know, this is Young Kid, Madden 18, Madden Champion. Like, give it up, Young Kid. I don't man. think give he's up. a YouTuber, but I mean, he's a minor celebrity, and that's what that kind of means. Young Kid, how has it been? You know, your success and your path, you know, to where you're at today. It's uh, I've always been a competitor. Um, when I was in high school, I was playing baseball. I hurt my arm. So then I picked up Madden, <laughs> and my arm. at first, I was really bad. I was getting blown out online, but I kept at it. I put more and more time into it. Eventually, I made my first tournament, but I had a big decision. It was the same time as my graduation. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so you beat the number one Wow. In that didn't sound awkward at baseball. all. <laughs> <laughs> That's number one. Number two, you said you had the decision to, be to, uh, to go to your graduation or go to a tournament. So, like, what did you do? I chased that money. I still got my diploma, but I chased that money. <laughs> there you go. We're out here chasing There's money. There's also flip. I'll mark it off. Yeah. Pretty That's big. That's awesome. Okay. Now, the Winning past Madden two, tournaments, you know, the official past Madden years, tournaments. How has it been for you? I know you had some ups and downs. It's been tough. We're getting close, a to, a, we're, we're losses. close to a bingo. I've been so close so many times. I made the final on TV you and just got need blown a, uh, out. But all those losses it made me gain The words of mobile gaming to be said out loud. Belt. That's awesome. I, that belt is so amazing. There's a lot of, you know, bling on that belt for you. <laughs> well, today, EA Play, you know, first look at the Madden 19 trailer. Super excited. It's going to be so fun. It's lit. I honestly wish I can stay right here and talk to you guys forever, but well, I'm not going to board you guys. Look at we're that guy there out. with his... I'm going to try to take this belt, you know, stay round two. So, we're out. Have a good day. <laughs> worked your whole life to get to moments like these to the very top of the mountain you battle through the pain and failure one just show my team place. show my team You've been told legends are born you fall so you can rise they're showing primarily Giants and... Okay, there's Patriots, that's a new team, and Seahawks. There's six teams now. Oh, they did show Steelers briefly. Yeah, there it is. All the moments that got you here. The Browns? And the Eagles. Ooh. You were in their position. You let the moment to find you. I don't know why they're showing a team that went 0 and 16 last year. You don't know how the rookies are going to do so far. I mean, they didn't get the number one draft. They didn't, they didn't show. I guess that was more rookie focused than. Uh, but I mean, they showed the page. Oh, they showed the Patriots and the Eagles, and they were both in the finals. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Super Bowl. I'm Nathanius, professional shoutcaster, here alongside Redwood Studios general manager Michael Martinez. How you doing Vikings, today? really? I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, we're gonna do this presentation a little bit differently and give you your first look at a brand new mobile game in a live winner-take-all head-to-head -head match. Michael, why don't you tell us the rules? Sure thing. The objective is straightforward: destroy the opponent's base to win. Unit control, super simple. Just tap it, tap to destination. Unit automatically moves there. I think that's the most efficient a... way to destroy the opponent's base is with this giant nuclear missile in the center of the map. Control the missile by standing on a majority of the control points. Oh, yeah, considered mobile a gaming. bar fills up while the missile is possessed. Whoever controls the missile when the bar fills up will fire the missile. It takes two missiles to destroy the enemy's base and win. That's it. Sounds great, Michael. Well, enough talking about it. Let's. Let's get to this match. Absolutely. All right, ladies shout and cast this match. awesome matchup lined up for you here today. Fighting for the blue side of the, the room. Chargers. If you could please give a I cheer the for the most formidable year. RTS players there is. Make some noise for In Control. Okay, well, here we go. We're first to love the YouTubers. So yeah. even if we went to mark it off last time, we could totally mark it off now. His opponent fighting for the red side of the room. A competitive mobile gaming phenomenon. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Nick at Night. Nick, 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 Nick. Chargers on 9 to 7. Did they make the. 
Al Mike, they made the wild card. These yeah, I can see why they didn't background. show him that. These players have it should be a great totally. match. It really is. I can't wait. All right, are the players ready? Let's uh, I got get Giants. This thing going. Ready to go. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Giants. All right, let's kick this off. Uh, Browns with like the top game. two yeah. picks, I think. It's a good genre. I'm very excited for this. The players are loading. Chargers in and made ready to the match. Kick. Not Chargers. Go. Jaguars win top four. The players' bases have been deployed, and the action begins like any. The Vikings were top four. The economy will be the focus. We right. have a harvester to start things off. Nothing too crazy yet. Nothing too crazy. Now the infantry is going to come. Mobile out to RTS, that huh? Point. Both players, of course, trying to take that position. Nick and Knight being able to reach it a little bit first. It looks like we're looking at blue team's position. capture. But in control is going from the top side. Also very important as Nick and Knight's forces have to circle around the center. Right. Let's see if he's able to create a two-on-one. Is he able to get there? Looks like he's getting there. That's Here comes GDI with uh, with uh, Rhino. It's going to rip up those infantry. Yeah, going for the anti-infantry. And like any strategy game, the units that you're going to use when you deploy them will have a huge impact. Your micromanagement of your forces and protecting that economy. Don't fat finger this. Knight with some attack bikes in the top. There he is. And in control, placing the turret on the top right side to help cover. He's running low on gems. As attack bikes move towards the northwest position. Okay. We can see that the missile is beginning to ready and firing that that takes out half your base the most important objective on the map is to hold those control zones right and in control those of the control zones have like right little indicators in the middle of their health bar so that maybe you could probably attack them straight on now he's redeploying so you don't need to use the missile but it might take longer the attack bikes and as that economy ramps up of course we're seeing bigger and more powerful units come out we have there the drill pod coming in the left side to help there it is. Flank. putting those some flank flamethrowers right absolutely again those are going to tear through those infantry yeah and in control brings out his first tank that's going to be used to try and help push I don't know who's winning right now. I guess we'll find out when... His way ...to the south side when, uh, of the missile passing halfway now. Oh, oh wow, you could get screwed on this thing by just having, like... ...the missiles. We see it starts to point towards In Control's base. Let's see if In Control can get around to that... I wonder, I wonder if you, you could, like, fill the bar up entirely, the yellow position. and then the other team yeah, can just, like, snipe it and just takes it from you. It's like, you do all the work, but they get the results. That would suck. As in control begins yeah. to secure the northwest spot, another tank. It looks like that's the, that's what can totally happen in this out. one. But now he's but that barge continuously fills as long as there's someone in the system. This missile is very very close to firing. Let's see what's gonna happen. He's With got blue person, everywhere. He, flanks, he takes the top that missile and that fires. fires. Off. Wow! And Nick at night, one shot away from being knocked out here. As the next one will start to ready up in just a moment's time, in control is very heavy artillery forces doing a great job at taking control of the map. Yep. It looks like the red, it looks like red team has a gem collector. Oh, so does blue. Nick and Knight's forces move up towards that north position. To help them get those uh, gems quicker. Very crucial, very important to protect those as your economy. I'm shout casting this too. Units. The units are going to come out a bit more slowly as you get more of them on the field. But in control, just spreading his forces out, trying to hold this advantage that he's had so yeah. far. Nick at night is trying to get in there, but there's a great turret placement from in control, blocking and just ripping through again those infantry. And we see in control now moving his tank towards this another drill pod out. we're seeing with some flame tanks. Yeah, bringing the flank, of course, those flame guys do amazing damage to the infantry, help to clean that out. Meanwhile, two more tanks coming out from Nick at night to try and secure those positions. He brings the up problem that on the south red side team had yeah. before was that they were trying to control for counters, completely. Trying to scout out and see what your opponent While is blue team was spreading out and trying to, so absolutely. Nick just trying to grab around. whatever they could. About those so blue team had two, but red team had one, but they were hunkered down at that like one. Didn't have enough time to get to the other two before it exploded. So now red team has all of them. Things back the other way. In control trying to rally his force. Oh, he's trying to get rid of his gem collectors. Two units. He wants to move all of them together, create a good flank position, and take over that side. We're seeing the first mech units from in control. This is the Wolverine. I think Red's going to get this off. Watch out for this missile. And Nick and Nick fire that one off and settle right. for next missile is going to end it. Next missile wins. Let's we'll see what happens. Ooh, Red doesn't have their gem collector Wolverine, anymore. You pointed out for in control coming out to try and deal with these forces. But uh, Nick at Night's done a great job of getting map presence and now also harassing the economy of there in he control. Is. Yep, wow. Okay, we've got our first mammoth tank on the board. If, Nick, if in control can get this in position, he's going to do some serious damage. That missile just passed halfway ready. He's also bringing out his Oh, this round is going quick. Wow. Deal with those a lot two. going on here. He's got a lot of range, that big boy, and in control just needs to hold This him. missile is fire. nearly going to fire. It can be stolen. Red, blue, red team, you better get in there. going to be able to get it off. Got it, Max. There it is. He's going to take it. Defeating yeah, that's what I was talking about. Where it's like you could do all of the, all of the, you could fill the bar entirely, Amazing. but then it could get stolen from you at the last moment. Thank you so much. So it would just awesome. suck. Any thoughts, guys? 
I just came to make mammoth tanks, so I, I've, I've done my job. Yeah. Absolutely. That was Thanks awesome. So we saw a little bit of everything right there. Perfect. Yeah. Let's hear it for Nathaniel. I wonder if there's like any in control. depth to it, though. Ladies and gentlemen, what you just saw was the worldwide reveal of Command and Conquer Rivals. Ooh. Rivals reimagined Man and Conquer, the huh? strategy experience. That's a big. For that's mobile. a big. We're giving players franchise that I've never played before. Although it's mobile, I wonder what people, quick, the people, fans of the franchise would like that are about fueled that. by skill and strategy. Now, Rivals will be coming to iOS and Android devices, but I'm excited to announce that Android players can play the pre-alpha today. So head to the Google Play Store, search Command and Conquer Rivals. The studio has been having an absolute blast <laughs> playing this game, and we can't wait for you to play. Please let us know what you think. I know, I'm Thank not the you. biggest fan of RTSs. Gems in her hand. Changing graphic style was so jarring. Realistic battle scenario switches over to mobile mobile RTS. Command and conquer for a new generation. Now, before we close the show with a spectacular epic anthem, I wanted to share a few final things. I am blessed to be able to work with some of the most creative people on the planet. They're just going straight to Anthem. No, no more announcements on Anthem. create amazing entertainment. And what I can say about all of those teams and what I can say about us is that we are always trying to learn and listen and strive to be better. And so as you look at the 10 experiences that you're going to see today and as you play games this week, there's some things we hope come through. First, that at the very core is choice, is that you as players get to choose how you play, what you play, when you play, and what devices you play on. That in making those choices, you feel you are treated fairly. That no one is given an unfair advantage or disadvantage for how they choose to play. Loot box talk. That for every moment that you invest, we know that you put so much of your life into the games we make. And that for every moment that you invest, you feel like you are rewarded and you are given value for that investment. And most importantly, that the games are fun, that we move past the grind, and that these are experiences that truly enhance your lives. And so as we think through all the things that we're trying to do, know that we want to be better and that we want to make great games. And that as much as we love making games and as much as you love playing them, there's something that is even greater that we can do together. The power of this community when we come together to do amazing things is profound. Last weekend was the third year of our Play to Give program, where we show the world how the power of play can be a positive force for social I might get another bingo leaders. here. <laughs> Millions of you out there participated in nine in-game challenges in our games, logging millions of hours in support of Play to Give. And to celebrate that, we contributed a total of $1 million to three charities that share our vision for a more inclusive world. A world where representation and equality are not something we strive for. I get that too. They are the standards. And where bullying and exclusion are not an everyday thread. These three organizations, the United Nations, he for she, PACE's National Bullying Prevention Center and Ditch the Label, an anti-bullying organization. All are doing great work, and we're proud to support them through Play to Give. That, and thank you for your support. Oh, I should have Thousands been in the background for EA all these, and millions of you all together of these doing immeasurable good because we love games. Thanks for being with us, and thanks for the incredible privilege of making games for all of you. Now, without further ado, 
Let's take a look at Anthem. All right, so the gun was just a little over an hour long. Anthem stuff. The gods vanished and left our world in chaos. Creating, altering, destroying. The Anthem is all that remains. I hear a pop song, I think. There's a storm coming. These walls can't protect us forever. I don't remember what it's called, though. Superhero landing. Something is out there. It wants to destroy us all. This is the song I was thinking of. I don't remember what it's called, though. They did announce that they were going to be pushing it back. Ooh, actually, so some actual gameplay now? Was well, it the gameplay they showed last year? Nope. Why the four oh, chairs? Who was that trailer? You guys, I've seen it a couple times, and it's so cool every time I see it. So I know all of you, like me, have had tons of questions about Anthem since last year. Oh, they're not done we're yet. all Bioware fans. So we're going to do something a little bit different for the people. rest of the show, and we're going to take a deep dive into Anthem. So I'm going to bring up some members of the Bioware team to chat with us. I knew what that song Ladies is called. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Casey Hudson, Mark Dara, and Kathleen Rutsart. I know I've heard it before. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out today. Yeah, Got a little game to show, right? Yep. Lots it's going to be very exciting. So, Casey, we're going to go ahead and just jump right in and get started with you. So, now we know that you all started, or Casey, you started your career at BioWare mm -hmm. way back in the day. Then you yep. took a couple years off. But before you came back, you actually worked on Anthem before you left. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, you know, first of all, it's amazing to be back. It's awesome to be making games for BioWare fans. You know, we have the best fans. Uh, so it's been super satisfying to come back to it. And, you know, I just want to be able to continue the legacy of the studio. And that's kind of where it started with Anthem, is just thinking about... And you know, we barely heard the, the audience, to be honest. Game. And yeah. we wanted to create a brand new world for people to discover, you know, a whole new world of story and character. But we also wanted to do something that was, you know, more of a dynamic and living world, and a game that would change every time you came back and played it. We also wanted to do something where, you know, if you want to invite your friends into it, then you could do that as well. So that was really the initial vision of the game, not an MMO, not a multiplayer game with stories sort of bolted on the side, but something new and different, and I think the team has really captured that vision over the years. Your fans really love the stories from Bioware, but I think we're kind of curious how you're planning to make story work in this shared world. So a great story for Bioware is really about characters that you can have a connection with, um, choices you get to make, and feeling like the story is about you. In a lot of multiplayer games, those things get diluted because you're mixing multiplayer and storytelling into the same areas. Now, you can build a solution to that, but you have to really build it into the core of the game. And that's what we've tried to do with, with Anthem. It's what we call our world, my story. So when you're out in the open world, the world is really dangerous, and you're focused on your mission. And this is where other players get to play with Ooh, you. Ooh, look at that thing down there. The thing that's really interesting about this 
it's unique for, uh, for Anthem is that this is a living shared world. So whether there's weather or Very vertical. Uh, it's nighttime. Which is a good thing. What we're experiencing, we're experiencing together. Everyone that's playing Anthem at a, at a What anyway, happened? It zoom in again? The same thing. <laughs> and this is what we mean when we talk about our world. It's a, it's a shared world that we all experience together. Did it, it's like, reverse itself my mission, for, like, five I seconds? I come back to a base, like Fort Tarsus. And this is a single-player experience. I turn in my, my uh, rewards. I talk to some characters. I experience the choices of my action. And this is where your story really lives and breathes. And by doing it this way, we are, we're able to combine that impact and agency of a single-player story with the fun of teaming up with your friends to play co-op in combat. And we're also designing it so There's that we can the background. add story for <laughs> years to come. So one of the first things that we hear when, um, from our community is they want to continue to play in our worlds. When they've finished Mass Effect or Dragon Age, players want more story. And so we've designed Anthem in a way that we can actually add more story for years to come. And it could be anything. A new moment with a character that you've grown to love or uh, an event in the world that uh, deepens the lore, or uh, an entirely new storyline and plot. Well, I'm certainly not going to complain about more story. I don't think anybody out there is going to either. So Kathleen, I wanted to ask you, uh, from a writing perspective, since you are the lead writer, can you speak to what it's like to create a new world like Anthem from the beginning? Well, what's really exciting for us... I like how they're um, showing clips while the writers, they're talking. But all of the, the devs, the designers, the artists, is that we're creating something new and mysterious for players to discover. So at the heart of the premise of Anthem is a world left unfinished by the gods. But the gods left behind their massive tools. And those tools are in constant conflict with this unknowable force called the Anthem of Creation. And the chaos of those things pushing against each other um, means that the world is constantly being reshaped in new and unpredictable ways. Yeah, violent storms, mutated creatures, gigantic monsters. It's a dangerous environment that you need to wear a suit of powered armor, a javelin, to, uh, to be safe in. Ooh, now, what is I that place? That looks like a boss fight. Maybe don't stop to think about is just how much work goes into creating a new intellectual property or IP, as we've been saying. Now, you know, we've seen all these different creatures, and Mark, you mentioned the storms. What's the process of creating a game like from scratch? Someone's mic is yeah, kind of it's weird. Yeah, it's something we've done a few times at BioWare. Um, you know, and really the hardest part is getting started, just kind of getting off the blank page. Uh, so what we try to do is we think about the new experiences that we're trying to unlock for players. So, like, what is the fantasy fulfillment? What are the new things you actually get to go and do that are different from what you've played before? So that's where we start. And then once we think about those things, um, you know, that's the power of creating new IP, especially for games, is that you actually get to build a whole fictional universe that's meant to bring out a certain experience. I was curious and then once we do why that, we should then do we kind of... We still need to build all the rest of it the looks, stuff. It looks like it's going to be fun. I just wonder what's more story things, though. think about, like, principles around art style, tone, and even the technology and the politics of, of our Okay, they're world. trying to replay everything. And then from we're not getting any footage, I think. And build out every last detail. At this, at this point. Yeah, and one of the uh, unique challenges for Anthem is that it's a world, an experience that's meant to feel alive, like it's happening uh, right now. And so the world is always changing, um, whether the uh, storms, uh, seasons, and um, yeah, that it's a, a really great art. concept to write for because I don't like that they're it mentioning that it's early concept art because that's usually when concept art is world, almost made. in real time, <laughs> a dramatic event that changes the world for everyone, and that could be anything from gameplay to lore. I mean, the, all of the moving parts in the dynamic world. I mean, that's the that's really the, that's cool what the word concept means. Like it's that very early on. But even though there's obviously a lot going on, it really all comes back to your character. So let's talk about who we're going to be playing as and why we're fighting these crazy people. Here we go. Here's some stuff so I want to know. So you are a freelancer, uniquely skilled to pilot these exo ja, these javelin exo suits, and uh, you need those suits Who's to that? survive and fight in this world because the world will kill you. Um, but on top of that, uh, our ancient rivals, the Dominion, have uh, they've discovered a way, they think, to weaponize the anthem of creation. And so um, we need to stop them and protect the free people of Tarsus. 
Now, I've heard you call Tarsus. it power armor a couple different things. Is it, is it a suit? Is it a javelin? Like, what's the, what's the canon term here? We call them javelins, and there are four. And uh, they each have uh, unique abilities. There's the ranger. Ranger. And then there's the colossus, the interceptor, and finally, the storm. Yeah, so... Uh, okay, so in Destiny's standpoint, the ranger's the probably game. an all-around. Uh, all Colossus is like, like giant tank. Said, you're not your suit. I'm not thinking of Destiny at all anymore. A pilot, <laughs> which means you can decide which suit you want to use based on your That's mood, a speedster, and then the like the with, storm is like a wizard. <laughs> Um, so, really what this allows us to do is, we built the suits to look like they're built from the materials of the world. Uh, so they each have their own unique abilities. So let's take a look at uh, the Ranger now. The Ranger is a Gameplay. more generalized suit, uh, able to, uh, to do a lot of different things. Uh, use really designed for up close and personal combat, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one I wonder the if there's part. like cover, the Colossus other is than like just... More specialized, but able to really pack in big weapons that let them devastate the battlefield. That 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 crosshair is not in the center. It's like more up. I, I'm just gonna say the storm from center. is gonna be my favorite. I'm sure. Which is kind of nice. Taking your face right Although now, it makes. Um, so the if you put it up awesome. higher, so it makes you look right more so down. Tweeted, some of you may whenever you need to shoot things, for, or it helps you like shoot things that are in the sky. Questions. And the first one is gonna be from at its sweet Nicole who asks. As a player who is all about making their character their own, what kind of customization options will be available in Anthem? Yeah, so we really want p players to express themselves, both through customizing the way their... I wonder their, how you can uh, customize this. Plays, through gear can you put, like, and, decals uh, weapons, on it? Like, you can just, like, get a decal and just, like, drag and drop. Ooh, one of them looks uh, like an N7. As well as hey, there we go! <laughs> geometry of the suit itself. We want teams to be able to do this. I said well, one looked like it, and, and then they actually showed one. you're going to be using a javelin for a long period of time, we really want you to be able to make it your own. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm a actually, wizard. I can see the future. <laughs> has a question connected to customization. Monetization. How, when, loot box, cosmetics. Yeah, so we are going to have uh, some cosmetics and vanity items that you'll be able to purchase, but you're always going to know what you're going to buy before you... Uh, okay, so it's not loot boxes. So no loot boxes. It's just... No ability to pay for power. So that means... It's not loot boxes. No ability it's to spend money on skins. gameplay advantage at all within Anthem. Okay, so but I'm not, not going to check on loot boxes. We want to make sure that Anthem is an immersive experience that feels like it's complete from the get-go. So that means a main story, a big open world, and an ongoing service that provides new content for a long period of time. New story, new, new, uh, new experiences for everyone. Well, I'm glad to hear that I can make my javelin pink. That's really all <laughs> I wanted to know, I'm going to be honest. All right, Casey. We talked earlier about this being a co-op experience. So mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit about how the team gameplay in Anthem is going to work? Yeah, it, it really is about you know the fun of teaming up. They totally. As, I mean, they had to. A team of superheroes and working together. Go so, through these um, you want to get a questions and together of different them. classes. So you know, I think here we're going to see the the Colossus. You know, just hammering people on the ground in gameplay. If we can have a look. Colossus at that. looks like it's just so a heavy artillery. Colossus looks like it's a really Titan strong, from Titanfall. You know, in melee combat, and then here you've got the Ranger shooting down from above, and then they're using com you know combos and special abilities and stuff like that. But what I love is you don't just run around, you're swimming and flying as well. Ooh, I like, under, I like the underwater portion. So it's portions. interesting because at the Slate Tones wants to know, how will you balance multiplayer with single player storytelling? So Anthem is really built around trying to combine the, uh, the impact of having your own personal story with the fun of playing with other players. But we really want to make sure that, uh, that playing with other people feels like a choice. So for people that want to just ex experience the story, we're, you're going to be able to do that. Now, going out into an open world like this uh, by yourself is going to be a little bit more challenging than, uh, than if the team of four people. And we've really tried to balance the co-op experience to be fun even for people that don't normally This island is a real... So I really hope that everyone at least gives co-op a try. Like, okay, Indian... Okay, let's to know. If you want to roll solo, you can, uh, but it's going to be environment a bit influence. more difficult. Um, well, I know you all are on the edges of your... Which feels kind of cool. How about we show a little gameplay? Yeah? You guys want that? All right, so um, Catherine, I think you're gonna set this up for us. I will. So, um, I like they had giant the, pots of like just colored have dirt. To play a mission called Scars and Villainies. The Scars have put together the an kind of based super weapon, so you gotta take them out. Indian so style. You start in the Strider, Ooh. which is like a giant walker, and it's your forward base of operations. You have a conversation with your crew, Borderlands, Halleck, 
Faye yeah, and like Owen, how break and you'll hear Owen. He's going to talk us through the mission. The all-around person is probably like rolling. Mordecai is um, probably like the and yeah. Then you just get into your the fast one. Except the fast one looked like you had. I already forgot what the fast one was called in this game. All right. Well, thank you so much. We're going to get a knife uh, though, Casey, and then Kathleen for talking to Storm, me about Anthem today. Uh, we're <laughs> going to go ahead and roll the gameplay now. Enjoy, everybody. Don't be obviously scripted. Be like kind of cool. I mean, it's gonna be obviously scripted because it already has like. Freelancer, time to get to work. Faye said these bastards made some kind of asset for using it as a weapon. So, find where they're making this garbage and shut it all down. that the crosshair is usually up. Nope, you can move it a little bit. The crosshair is primarily upper center. Like slightly, slightly askew upwards. Owen, what's the plan here? Picking up loads of scars nearby. Take a look around the area, but uh, be careful. You got a lot of ammo. <laughs> It's like Scott when you more. look up. That's the issue that you usually have if it's so if the reticle's up or higher. Is that quickly. you're usually looking more down. And you can obviously miss some easy stuff when you're looking up. Halo had the opposite where they had the reticle underneath the center. And so you constantly were looking more up than looking down, which is their intention because they want you looking at the floor all the time. What is that? It didn't look like wires and it didn't look like it was like oil. <laughs> I'll take these bombs. It didn't even affect him. No, I kind of did his shield. There's a shaker relic. Wait, something's odd. Get a closer look, would you? See those radiant pieces of energy? They're echoes from the Anthem of Creation. Where are loads of scars nearby. Where are those yeah. subtitles at? I'm trying and I'm trying to understand what the sup? I'm trying to understand what all the bars are. What's that upper left one? Is that health? Or is yeah, that upper one must be health. Return them to the relic. You've got to silence it fast. I wonder what the different colors mean for, for pickups. It's gone silent. Disaster averted. Do you think we get a bonus for... Wait, something's happening. What the hell was that? I think that was whatever laid all the eggs around here. The sound came from below your position. Where are you going? You're gonna land right on top of where. Oh, never mind. On the plus side, this definitely counts toward hazard pay. There's a train of this acid gunk leading down. Follow it. We should find the source. I noticed that it's when the player talk, it just said player, which is kind of unfortunate. It should at least put like their. I don't know. Maybe you can put in a name or use their gamer tag instead of just player, because that's kind of too. That's kind of. That's kind of basic. <laughs> Hi, doggy. Okay, don't show the fight. <laughs> they say Adam was coming out in like early 2019. Ah, uh, how cool was that? I'm so hyped, you guys. Yep, and that was uh, that was actually just a short version of the full demo that we brought here to LA. So if you want to come by the Anthem Theater here at uh, EA Play, you can check out the game live. 
So I'm sure the question on everyone's mind. Release date. When do we get to play? So Anthem comes out February 22nd, 2019 on uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. So mark your calendars, everybody. Fire off your tweets. Thank you so much again to Casey. I don't know if that was confirmed Fire before or if that was just, if that was leaked. Outside, so I remember they, they said they right. delayed it. Yeah. Casey Hudson, everybody. I also want to give a big thank you to all of the developers who showcased their games today and everybody working hard at their studios back home around the world. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, some of what you saw today, you guys have to wait to play. But you guys, EA has so much available. Not on Rabble too. Now. Now you can play that now. Score, you can get your free trial of FIFA 18's World Cup today. And Andrew told us about the free trial of Origin Access. Yarny is back with a buddy in Unravel 2, which is also I'm watching Devolver Digital's today. conference. I'm not. Plus, Tomorrow we have on your friends, Xbox and Bethesda. Starting today as well. And now, then the next day we have Ubisoft and Sony. Today, and then we have Nintendo. Because I'm know? skipping. I'm, I'm not like, watching I the PC gaming the show. I get it. I get it. It's not really so, a conference. Uh, I let you guys know there's a bunch of different games. Devolver Digital's. And then Square Enix is I'm skipping because I don't want to spoil myself or anything. Check out the games, but I want to thank everybody for coming down. Just the just like the big six. And Devolver Digital's kind of growing a little bit. Did I miss anything worthwhile? You literally got here at the end. <laughs> All in all, it was all right. Not a great one. It's a good start. Because now it can't go, it can go either worse or better from here on out. Instead of like setting a bar so low that it could have, that nothing would have compared terribly worse. Or setting a bar so high that everything is worse in comparison. There's a nice middle road. I mean, having Unravel 2 done and released today is a pretty good announcement. I didn't know that they that that was leaked previously. Bingo board. All right, let's just pause. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, bingo board. We got two bingos. We got this one right here. We got this one right here. No, no, no NHL things announced. No need for speed. No Peggle 3. Aw. Fans in the audience. Eh. It, we might, we might have counted that. I mean, when she went into the audience and talked with Vince Appella, that might have been counted. No real tech issues. I don't, I would, I wouldn't consider like the dev tools in the Unravel, the, uh, the Unravel showing to be like a tech issue. No loot boxes. There was an ounce of premium skins in Anthem, but no loot boxes announced. And no free-to-play game with loot boxes announced, unless Command & Conquer was a loot box game. Nothing about The Sims. Nothing about UFC. No Skate 4, which is going to depress so many people, unless they announce that at Microsoft or Sony, which might make some people happy. So, I mean, we knew they were going to talk about Anthem. We knew they were going to talk about Battlefield. We knew they were going to talk about all, every little sports game. Sports took up, like, 35 minutes, it felt like, out of this hour and 20 minute process uh conference so yeah it was it was for ea it was good not as good as the others they tiptoed around apologizing for the whole loot box situation with battlefront 2 like they apologized but they didn't say sorry it was like we understand uh you, you, uh, playing games should be worth it and stuff like that instead of like just getting the stuff yeah i never got i never played in rebel one either but the I mean, rebel two thing looked really good and then just announcing that it's out now really was really nice good thing uh they announced battle royale for battlefield 5 but they didn't show anything about it at all so i don't know People, people were kind of like Battlefield, the release announcement for Battlefield 5 kind of was like mixed. And I'm not sure if it was mixed for the good, for a good reason. People just saw like female with bionic arm and they were like, Ugh. some people were like, it's not 
realistic depiction. I'll give him that because they said that was their take of World War Two. But announcing Battle of Royale and then not showing anything about it probably doesn't help with the critics at the moment. Oh, well. So, I'm back in my office. I got I, I, I mentioned this briefly, but I managed to get everything set up. Like the lights, the monitors, the green screen back here, which is way closer. Because I'm touching it right now. Uh, way closer than where I than where, where it was before. Like 20 minutes before the stream started. <laughs> so, tomorrow, we're going to be streaming again. No stream later tonight. Like, no stream in 30 minutes. Because this is the stream, and I still got to... I got to upload today's, uh, today's Watch Me Fail video. Because I haven't uploaded it yet. What time are the conferences tomorrow? I think Microsoft is, like, early. Microsoft's is at 3, so never mind. I take back the early. So we'll be streaming tomorrow, a little before 3, so that we could do go over the bingo board and, like, any rumors that might have come out. Then we will be watching Bethesda's later that day at 8.30. So we'll, we'll watch Microsoft's call for a bit, a bit, come back later. Should I expect it in the 60s? Uh... Is that to the list? I got. I still have to find a place to put it on the list. <laughs> I'll just say after Kingdom Hearts, we'll, we'll expect it. But yeah, three o'clock, maybe two fifty. Microsoft, eight thirty tomorrow, maybe eight twenty. We'll start the stream for Bethesda. The Volver Digital, a little too late. It's like ten o'clock at night for us, and we won't be watching that anyway. Just because like they don't have like a link to a, a stream of it. Hmm. At least on this version, I see. Then Monday, we'll be back at 3 for Ubisoft's. And then 8 for Sony's. And then we have an 11 o'clock stream on Tuesday for Nintendo. And we'll have bingo boards for all of them. We have one bingo so far, so we're one for one. I wonder if we can get six for six. <laughs> That'd be nice. The ball will only be like 15 minutes. I don't have a bingo board for that, though. Yeah, yeah, it might not hurt. It probably will be uploaded to YouTube then. Because this is going to be uploaded to YouTube in like a week. <laughs> Speaking of which, till next time, hopefully you enjoy.